Hello, Zero K fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 with another Expedition Mash stream for you all. Today we're going to start out with a game between Flipstep and Manu 12. I'm not sure who Manu 12 is, never seen that name before, but judging by the LO values, they seem like a pretty prolific team player. I'll double check the aliases, but I don't. Yeah, I don't see any recognizable aliases. They do apparently have a pretty good record for team play. So I. I mean, I don't really see much team games other than the 2v2s that I cast usually in preparation for the tournaments, and of course the tournament games themselves, which if you haven't seen that, the 2v2 tournament from last week, it's on YouTube. Me and Sackdoth and Floris did bunch did all the tournament, and go watch it. If you haven't watched it yet, if you didn't watch it live, and you haven't caught it yet, go YouTube and watch it after watching this stream. Or if you're watching these on YouTube afterwards, go back and watch the videos as well. So anyway, we're going to be starting out, like I said, Felicity and Manu on Red Comet 1v1, and... I guess that's all really said about that, so let's begin. Flipstep starting out in the southwest corner of the map with the Heavy Tank Factory, while Manu is starting out as well Heavy Tank Factory, which is a little bit interesting. Starting out here, we have Manu going straight for... Okay, so Manu is going for very quick economic play, getting fast welder, which for Heavy Tank isn't that unreasonable, but usually, Flipstep, what they're doing, that's more typical. Getting an early Kodachi, allowing for easy raid, allowing for a lot of pressure to be applied into Manu's territory, whereas Manu, on the other hand, is seeking to increase their territory as quickly as possible. They're probably going to send this welder, yeah, they're sending it over to the north, building up metal extractors here, and the commander's probably going to go over to the center once they're done creating the radar and the lotus. I mean, it's a pretty standard start, although admittedly it is only two metal and not three, so Manu is a little bit behind, whereas Flipstip, they started at the three metal point, the southwest side of the map, which is equivalent to where Manu's welder is going. So Flipstip is a bit ahead economically, at least in terms of metal, though Manu did build a few more solo collectors. At this point, though, it's still fairly even. Manu, however, does have 10 seconds left on the Panther, and the Kodachi will be arriving at that welder quickly enough. Manu, however, so the one problem there is Flipstep thinks Manu is up here, because normally players will start here, and Flipstep's going to end up finding Manu's welder. Manu's well aware of this Kodachi, and will be sending the Panther to deal with it, but Flipstep basically finding Manu's expansion by basically going for what would be typical. So Manu, unfortunately, did not seem quite realized that and their welder rather undefended the as well as the metal extractor the metal extractor should survive thanks to the repair but still that does slow things down causing Manu's opening expand strategy to not be quite as useful as it could have otherwise been that being said though Manu is able to get rid of Flipstip's Kodachi for basically free they lost some time but at this point the economy is relatively stable relatively even so both players are actually about evens so Flipstip Pulled Manu back a bit, though Manu still is an earlier worker, he can still build up a bit faster, and does have a Panther on the board. Manu does not have anything. They only have a Kodachi, which, as we just saw, doesn't do especially well against Panthers. I mean, it can be microed around them, but it's a little tricky. So, interesting play there, though. I mean, Manu, I'm not sure if they were trying to trick Flipstep by not going for the typical start location, but it didn't quite work out on things as well as Manu had hoped, if that's what they're going for. They might have just been going for center because it is a bit faster to get in. Granted, Manu was playing more of a defensive opener, so I'm not entirely sure about that. But on the other hand, that having the center here and just projecting force along the center quickly does mean the northeast is easier to defend. Because right now, Manu can easily defend this entire area. Or, okay, this is a bit too far, but this area can be easily defended. This is basically Manu's territory. And flips up on the other hand, more of a framework around here. They could take the northwest fairly easily thanks to the terrain. However, Manu trying to stop this, but it's not working out too well. Manu able to get rid of the Kodachi, but loses the Panther in the process, which does mean Flipstep basically has free reign now over their half of the map. Manu does have another Panther, which will help out, but if it goes to the north, that should... That should stop Manu a bit. But, sorry, it should Flipstep a bit. Manu, however, has now pretty much developed the entire northeast side. A little surprising, though, they are putting their commander along with their welder so they want to have the defenses alongside the economic development their welder putting a bit pushing it forward though in mean, manu despite not having a whole lot of units is still taking territory actually not that aggressively come to think of it because they're not going to the south whereas flips have similarly not going to the north both players developing in a fairly similar fashion I'm a bit surprised Flipstep isn't going to the north either. Flipstep apparently okay low on energy that's sort of the problem Flipstep actually both of them are stalling on energy badly 15 and 18, that is not very good. Both of them desperately building solar collectors. I mean, Manu probably overdeveloped on this. These back metal extractors, honestly, 
It might have been a better idea to have used the Waller to go over here, because Flipstep probably wouldn't have expected that. And also, these Metal Stars would still be in Manu's territory. Manu could have taken them at their leisure, but they took them first, thus that the potential is kind of gone. There's still some pressure that Manu can exert over here to the southeast, but it's a lot harder to hold than the northeast would be. So Manu, unfortunately, not quite able to really take advantage of that too much. But they are still pulling ahead for metal. It's just for energy, not so much. And Flipstip coming in with Kodachi, which is getting stunlocked, and that does give Manu still a bit of an edge. And Flipstip is slightly ahead militarily, but not by much. And in terms of territory, Manu starting to exert some pressure over the north, but Flipstip, Flipstip can interfere with this, and it looks like they're going to you know, send a couple of Panthers over here just to stop all this expansion, just to keep Manu honest, basically. And Manu well aware of this, but Manu's Panthers are not in position, cannot deal with this, and there's no static defense this far up either. Speaking of static defense, that is what's getting rid of this Panther here. Those Lotuses basically stopped the Panther Colden. I mean, it got rid of the Metal Lake Shreactor, but that's two Panthers. That's 600 metal right there. In terms of reclaim, just not even worth it. Not at all. The reclaim of the Panthers alone would more than pay for that. And the Welder trying to build a Lotus, but not going to get it in time, goes down. And the Panthers are able to take out the Lotus and ultimately able to stop this expansion. And in fact, that does mean Flipstuff has a fair amount of power along this entire north side, actually. There's not a whole lot Manu has to actually deal with this. So apart from this Lotus here, these Panthers can go around the north side with impunity, tearing apart Manu's economy. The commander's going to build a wall here, so it's a bit harder for the Panthers to get in. But there is nothing that Manu has to really respond, and Flipstep taking all the territory along here. I mean, Flipstep has this entire section of the map. A soft control over this whole thing. And... Manu trying to push in. I mean, the thing with Heavy Tank, of course, is that it's hard for Heavy Tank to have a lot of mobile influence. Like, Heavy Tank can't really project influence that easily. Their units are slow, they're not very numerous, and they don't have the ability, apart from static defense, to really have defenses everywhere on the map effectively at once. So they obviously have to worry about static defenses, but it also means they can't play as aggressively. It also means that in this situation, I mean, Reaper can work, but it is it is going to be tough for Manu at this point. Flipstep, they're developing quite well. They have static defense around the map. They're playing heavy tank the way you play heavy tank. Manu, on the other hand, is playing heavy tank closer to the way you play light vehicles. And while the Reapers will be quite useful for taking this area down, Flipstep... This area is pretty decently developed. This is the, the Reaper should tear it down. The commander's still in the way, and actually trying to exert some pressure over to the southeast as well. Manu setting up a bit to the southeast, trying to take that before Flipstick gets a chance. And actually, Flipstick's commander, Flipstick's commander getting a bit overextended there. Oh, far overextended. The Reapers take it out. So Flipstick, that reduces a lot of the pressure that Flipstick has over the northeast side. Sorry, the southeast side. But at the same time, Flipstick is trying to bear down in the center. And these Reapers. Actually, not doing a whole lot for getting rid of... Wait, why don't I have tooltips? Sorry, something went wrong here. I'm supposed to have tooltips here. I... Okay, forget it. I'll look into that afterwards, because that's a, this is a bad time to look into it. Anyway, Panther. one Panther goes down for Flipstip, and Manu forcing back the other Panther somewhat, though. It's still kind of difficult. The Panther... Okay, the last Panther is actually going behind enemy lines. Could possibly attack directly, actually. However, the Reapers are stopping enemy Flipstip. Almost would have been better off using the panther to get rid of the radar, get rid of the metal. This panther needs to retreat. Manu needs to pull this panther back. It's going to go down too quickly if the other panther gets a shot in. And, oh right, because there's a delay. Never mind. Silly me. So yeah, the panther here is, sorry, the reaper there is going to be... Now, Manu has held in their territory, developing pretty well in here, but at the same time, Flipstep has managed to take the north. Actually, take the northwest pretty well. I mean, pretty much... This entire area is not likely to be attacked. It could be attacked, and the Flipstep would have to develop it a bit further. But actually, that start helps as well. Flipstep basically has this area pretty much live. There's not much that Manu can do about it. This group here in the center, they are a bit easier to threaten, but they're still actually fairly... With the Reapers there, yeah, it's... That is not an easy place to raid. Really, Flipstep has not left a lot of easy places to raid. The northwest, as is being developed, can be rated fairly well, but the south side here, maybe a bit with pillagers or reapers. I mean, the reapers, the five reapers, should be able to break through this without too much issue. And 
Oh, okay, cool. Yes, six pairs of feet apparently has always wanted to catch me live. Well, there you are. Welcome to the live show, which is the main show. Because everything else is just the live show recorded on YouTube. But anyway, back to the game. Manu bearing down with Reapers, trying to get this area down, and they will be able to do so. Five Reapers is more than enough. However, I really think that a couple of them should have been sent over to the north, because Flips have going for a counterattack, which will be much more successful than I mean, these Reapers. Should be able to get down all the way to here. Like about here or so. The Glaive is going to start dealing with him a bit, though it's going to be tough. One Glaive, not going to do well. Ten Glaives surrounding the five Reapers should do okay, and the Reapers just taking more and more damage. They should be able to make it down here, but at the same time, Ma Flipstep doing the same thing and not taking the most efficient route, going through the Solar Collectors, but breaking down, very important, breaking down the Lotuses. That was huge, because that means that anything else can just go through here. Manu has basically no defenses to the north, no influence to the north whatsoever, and in the south, they have the Reapers, which are very much bum bunched up, but that's it. There's nothing here to defend. There's nothing that will stop these Reapers. Flipstep can basically just run through, and Manu doesn't have much of a hope, honestly. And a Sharpshooter coming up. Just for good measure, why not? Flipstep throwing that out there to get rid of the Reapers. Like I said, they are able to get through the south side. So Flipstep getting damaged a fair bit, and Manu does have, at least with Overdrive, has about the same amount of metal, but now Overdrive getting cut off. Yes, completely cut off. There's really not much more to be done with Overdrive. So Manu... Manu just so open for harassment, and Flipstep going for the straight for the main base, not even bothering anything else, just going to go cut in, try to take out the Heavy Tank Factory, and so is Manu. Though Manu is now rushing into a pretty tight spot. Enough Sharpshooters, actually not enough Sharpshooters, they won't be fast enough. The Cloakybot Factory is going to go down. The Heavy Tank Factory is having a bit of a harder time, but it looks like it really is just a capture race here. Or, sorry, a kill race here, not a capture race, what am I thinking? Wrong game. And it is just a... Well, it's a base trade situation, but Flipstep can easily win this. Flipstep has workers over to the north. They have far more workers, far more metal than Manu does. Their energy is also fairly decentralized, whereas Manu's all in this one line. Now, Flipstep has managed to get in for Manu's two tanks. Well, I mean, Flipstep's Reaper's down to four. Able to get rid of... Sorry, Manu's Reaper's down to four. Able to get rid of Flipstep's base. The Sharpshire is still being a thorn in its side, and... One Reaper is actually very nearly dead, and that's the one that Sharpshooter is going to go for. So we have two Reapers in about two seconds. Actually, one Reaper in about two seconds. Is that... Ooh. Takes cover just in time. So, still two Reapers, but not one, which it would have been. It looks like Manu actually is able to completely tear apart Flipstep's attack force. So Flipstep ultimately does not get ahead in that base trade situation. They lost both their factories. Manu lost none of them. Actually, Manu looks like... Manu's going to be able to make a comeback here. That was that was fairly risky with the five tanks, but it did work out. Flipstep's counterattack, not quite as efficient as it could have been. I think if it hit the factory, it would have had an easier time, but I don't know. Even then, Flipstep going for another Cloakybot factory, but it, as soon as the Reapers find it... Oh, never mind, they're dead. Sharpshooter does ultimately catch up to the Reapers and does ultimately kill them. And this is where reclaiming is going to be very important. At this point, Manu... They look like they're probably trying to set up for a counter for a second attack with the Panthers. Which, unless they know where the factory is, isn't the best idea. However, they are going to get lucky. They are going to go to where the factories are, which is perfect. So, Flip Manu should be able to get away from, good out of this. Reapers, sorry, not Reapers. Rec Rockos are coming up. Rockos and Sharpshooters coming up here. No more Reapers, though. There is a Banisher down in the south, which is out of position. Cannot deal with those Panthers. And Reaper coming along here for Manu as well. Had one left from the defensive. And ultimately able to get through, kill off the Welder, and push through pretty effectively. A Sharpshooter out of the way, but the Panthers do not care. They're moving in, and they're just going to tear apart this factory. They're going to tear apart everything. Sharpshooter is not even close to ready. Character is going down. Lotus is going down. I don't think the Panthers even care so much about that. The Banisher finally catches up, though. And the Sharpshooter also catching up. But even then, the Panthers slow down the factory to the point that I think... There's really not much Flipstep has, I mean, in terms of initiative. Manu definitely has the initiative now. Flipstep, however, does have well, a bit more of the map, but honestly, not really well defended. They lost a lot of those five Reapers. That that tore everything down. And the last Reaper coming in here, Sharpshooter will be able to get one shot. Next shot off will kill the Reaper. No, it won't. Never mind. Not quite. Okay, it was very close. And the factory goes down alongside the Reaper, but still... Flipstep has nothing to build with, has zero initiative. 
They... Do they even have a worker? I don't think they have any workers left. They're going for one last stand, but that is going to be it. I mean, Flipstip... Clickabout Factory might have been the best idea for Factory to go for. Not a lot of individual unit power will need to build up a few more, especially against heavy tanks. Especially against developed heavy tanks. But... That didn't quite work out, and Manu should be able to tear apart this last force and win. And Flipstip had a safer position over to the northwest. It would have been a bit harder to project the force, but I think back here would have been a lot harder for the Reapers to get back here and deal with it. And also, the Panther's nearly impossible. The Stardust would have been fairly problematic. Not impossible, but would have reduced the Panther numbers quite a bit more by the time everything came through. So ultimately, Manu does look to be in a very favorable position. And Flipstip can't actually rebuild. This is it. This is it. Flipstep has no workers whatsoever. No commander. We lost that a while ago over to the front. So Flipstep, a bit too aggressive. Manu, however, was... Actually made that defensive play work. It was a bit risky, though. That, that attack over to the east side of the base here, that was close. But not enough at the time. I mean, Manu's, Manu's five reapers did push through. I mean, it was kind of tough to push back five reapers, especially when they're bearing down on the main base. And... While the sharpshooters weren't a bad idea, I think... Uh, against Reaper... Banishers actually do work pretty well. But... It's just hard. Like, getting rid of five Reapers, that is 30,000 health worth of forces coming... Uh, 30,000. Yeah, actually, that's right. Yeah, actually, 35,000. 35,000 health of units just coming in here. So, yeah, and Drone pointing out the amount of mistakes. Yes, I, real I actually wasn't quite sure. This is... Well, 1975 versus 1660, I'm a little surprised that Flipstep did make as many mistakes. And I think the first mistake was the fact that Flipstep was get it, guessing that Lotuses would actually hold. Because the thing for Lotuses, of course, is that they hold fine against Panthers and Kodachis, but Reapers are pretty much designed to tear down Lotuses, so relying on that will not work. Like, a better play would have been to have Radar see those Reapers come in and Flipstep hold their Reapers back. Use everything to tear apart Manu's forces, or at least hold them back long enough to buy some time for Heavy Tank to pump out more Reapers and ultimately destroy them, possibly Banishers as well, because there's a lot of Reapers, crowd control would have been handy. And then push back. So Manu has no forces threatening, and Flipstep surrenders, there it goes. So yeah, Flipstep, if Manu had no forces surrendering, then Flipstep could have pushed in pretty much the same force they had before, but would have had to fight maybe one or two Reapers in the defense, in Manu's defense. And Mono had no static defense or very little static defense to really counter. So ultimately, Flipstip got a bit overconfident, got a bit overaggressive, and paid for it. So that was that game. And on another one in just a moment, it will be a game between... I think it's a game between... Okay, Professional and Google Frog. Professional, also known as Spam Sponsor, though usually known as Professional. I'm not sure how recently they've played, but yeah, against Google Frog, that'll be on Ravage, and that'll be up in just a couple minutes, so stay tuned.